Welcome to subtopic 5.3, which is on the pH scale. Our learning objectives are going to be to understand the pH scale and what it is, and to also look at performing calculations using the pH formula and its rearrangements. Our learning objectives link directly to these two science understandings, which we'll look at delving into in further detail. What is the pH scale? It is essentially a measure of the relative acidity or the basicity of a solution. pH is a relative measure of the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium ions that are in solution. If we have a look at the formula, we say that the pH is equal to the negative log or logarithm of the concentration of H plus or the concentration of H3O plus. The square brackets indicate concentration of a particular solution and in this case we are looking at the concentration of H plus or H3O plus. The concentration of hydrogen ions is measured in moles per litre. Why do we end up using a logarithmic scale? Essentially, a logarithmic scale is used because the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution can vary quite significantly. And we want to find a simpler way to distinguish between changes in this concentration of a particular solution. To look at this idea, we can look at comparing the concentration of hydrogen ions relative to a pH of 7. And by this time, you should be aware that a pH of 7 is given as a neutral solution. So if we say that the hydrogen ion concentration at a pH of 7 is given a relative value of 1, then a decrease in pH by 1 represents a tenfold increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions. So going from a pH of 7 to 6 results in a tenfold increase or a 10 times increase. Going from 6 to 5 represents another tenfold increase. And we could just say therefore that going from 7 to 5, going from neutral to more acidic, results in a 100 times increase or 100 fold increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions. We can look at the other side of things. So if a solution goes from neutral and becomes more alkaline, then the concentration changes in the opposite manner. So we've seen the pH scale before, we know that it ranges from a pH of 0 through to 14, and we can think about breaking it up into these three clear groups. So a pH of 7 is what we say is neutral, uh, less than 7 is acidic, and greater than 7 is alkaline. Why is that the case? What does it actually mean for a solution to be acidic, neutral, or alkaline? To look at this idea, we're going to consider water. And water is quite unique in that it can undergo a process known as self-ionization. It effectively reacts with itself to produce ions. One water molecule can potentially donate its proton to another water molecule, and in doing so, it forms hydronium ions. The one that has donated its proton then forms OH-, which is a hydroxide ion. This could also be represented in this equation here. If we imagine water uh, essentially dissociating, we could think it then ends up forming hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. This is the thing. In pure water, there are, in actual fact, small but equal concentrations of these two different ions. And that's because water has that ability to self-ionize. This concentration is equivalent to 10 to the minus 7 moles per litre. So it's a very, very small concentration. The concentration of hydronium or hydrogen ions would be equal to the concentration of hydroxide, and that's given as 10 to the minus 7 moles per litre. If we therefore look at using the formula for pH, which is this one here, so pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions, we can substitute our number, and that should say negative log of 10 to the minus 7, our final result gives us a value of 7, and this relative number indicates what we would classify as a neutral solution. If we start at a pH of 7, or a neutral solution, we have said that the concentration of these two ions are small but equal, and if we have a look at going from a neutral solution to an acidic solution, what we notice is that the concentration of hydrogen ions has increased. 
In turn, the concentration of hydroxide ions also decreases. And to think of it this way, as you increase the concentration of hydrogen ions, more of these hydrogen ions react with hydroxide to reform water. So that will still result in an overall increase in H+, but also it will result in a decrease in OH-. If you go to a basic solution, we can see we've got our equal concentrations. We look at increasing the concentration of hydroxide, OH- ions. This would effectively lower the concentration of H+, through its reaction to produce water. So you would have an increase in concentration of OH- together with a decrease in the concentration of H+. And this is the key one to consider because that's how we measure the pH of a solution. To summarize, what we can say is that acidic solutions effectively have an excess of hydrogen ions or H3O+, in comparison to hydroxide. Neutral solutions we know have equal concentrations of these two. And as you go to an alkaline solution, you look at an excess of OH- in comparison to H+. Now, in this section of the topic, you will be expected to know how to use the formula for pH to solve for a range of questions and to look at even its rearrangement. We'll have a look at a fairly simple uh, example first. So calculate the pH of an aqueous solution in which the H plus concentration is 0.001 molar. We've been given the concentration of H plus, which is 0.001 moles per liter. This means we can substitute it directly into our formula for pH. So negative log of the concentration of H plus equals the negative log of 0.001. Put that into your calculator and you end up with three as your answer. And this would indicate that you've got a relatively acidic solution. For our second example, I'm going to consider a strong monoprotic acid. So strong meaning that it can completely ionize, monoprotic meaning that it has one donatable proton. Calculate the pH of a 0.050 molar solution of HCl. Our formula for pH uh, considers the concentration of H+. In order to determine that, we have to consider the ionization of hydrochloric acid. Because we know that this equation virtually goes to completion, so with a particular number of HCl molecules, they will all completely react with water and they'll produce H3O plus or H plus. That means that we can equate the two concentrations as being equal. So the concentration of H plus is equal to 0.050 molar as well. From there, we can now substitute this into our formula and solve for the pH. And in this case, we get 1.3 as our answer to two sig figs. What we could also consider is what we call the pOH. And this isn't as common, but this effectively measures the concentration of hydroxide ions in solution. And you can see that the formula is very similar. So instead of pH, you've got pOH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. Going back to pure water, we know that the concentration of this is 10 to the minus 7 uh, moles per litre. So in pure water, the pOH is equal to 7 as well. Therefore, in pure water, if we look at adding the pH and pOH, we would get a value equal to 14, which corresponds to that total range of the pH scale. The product of their concentrations can be given as such. So the concentration of H plus times by the concentration of OH minus resultingly gives us 10 to the minus 14. And this product of the two concentrations is often called the ionization constant of water. It turns out that this relationship is actually true for all solutions. And what that means is that we can use this relationship here to solve for any one of the following, pH, pOH, the concentration of H+, plus, or OH-, minus, uh, given some information. For our third example, we need to calculate the pH of an aqueous solution in which the hydroxide ion concentration is 0.000224 molar. This is the information that's been stated. 
To do this, we can work out firstly what the POH is. So we can use this formula here, substitute in our values, we get a value of 3.65. From there, we can then say that based on this idea that pH plus POH equals 14, if we rearrange this equation, we can solve for the pH. So pH will be equal to 14 minus the pOH, which is 14 minus 3.65. From there, we can then determine the pH of this solution. Uh, it's a pH of 10.4. That indicates it is an alkaline solution, which makes sense because the hydroxide ion concentration is stated here. However, that's not always the case. Example 4 is going to involve a strong base. Calculate the pH of a 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 6 mole solution of calcium hydroxide. We are told the calcium hydroxide ion concentration is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 6. And if we have a look at its dissociation, what we know is the concentration of hydroxide should effectively be double the concentration of calcium hydroxide. So two lots of that 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 6 should get us 1.54 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per litre. From there, now we can actually solve for pOH, given by this formula here. Substitute in our value from previously, we get an answer of 4.81. From there, we can rearrange the equation of pH plus pOH and solve for pH. So pH is equal to 14 minus this 4.81, and we get an answer of 9.2 uh, to 2 sig figs. Using the two formulas that we've uh, just seen, we can look at rearranging them to solve for the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions when you're given the pH or the pOH of a solution. So I'm not going to go into the specifics here, but essentially um, the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 10 to the minus pH and the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of minus the pOH of a solution. Example 5, calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution with a pH of 3.2. So we can see we can just use this uh, formula directly. Concentration of H plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH. So 10 to the minus 3.2 gets us 0.00063 or 6.3 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre. Example 6, calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution with a pH of 5.01. Using this relationship again, so pH plus pOH equals 14, we can rearrange and solve for pH. Keep in mind the question is asking us to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, but it's given a pOH, so we can work out the pH directly from that, so it's equal to 8.99, um, obviously, we'll just use the exact answer in our calculator for the next part. So the concentration of H plus is equal to 10 to the minus 8.99, and we should end up with 1.02 times 10 to the minus 9 moles per litre. This represents a fairly low concentration, so we would expect this to be in the alkaline region, as we can see from the pH, but also the pOH. In class, we'll look at some more examples of how we can use these different formulas and their rearrangements to solve for either concentration or pH or pOH. See you guys in the next video.